Hey everybody, it's uh, Monday, it's Martin Luther King Day, and uh, just reporting in on how I'm feeling. Uh, not so hot, a lot of pain in my uh, neck and my shoulder area. Uh, I'm right-handed, and the treatments and all is in my left hand, left arm, but um, I'm finding out that I use my left hand all the time as to, to reach to drink for a glass of water or to like bump open the door when I'm finished, you know, uh, car door when I'm finished driving. Uh, all kinds of things just kind of like, eh, just kind of bother it. But, um, you know, it's just a part of the process. Uh, the thing about prolotherapy that differs from surgery, I think mentally, is that you, um, prolotherapy really takes patience because it's real gradual. With surgery, it's like, bam, you've had surgery. All this stuff has happened to you. You can tell all this stuff has happened to you. So you feel like something's, you feel like something's happened. You feel taken care of. You feel like the process might have been fixed, whether or not that might be the case. But with prolotherapy, you have to take your time. You have to wait. You have to let the body heal. And that takes a lot longer than I think anybody's really uh, happy to wait for. Um, it's only been three days for me. So, and already I'm starting to kind of like get a little cabin fever of not being able to work out and stuff like that but um, it just takes patience and you just you just can't wig out I mean there's good days and there's bad days but I mean I can't suddenly just go do you know bench press and, and stuff like that that'd be crazy as long as I take care of myself I, I should be okay I should get better and eventually ideally I'll be totally healed uh, we'll see. Um, one reason I wanted, one thing I want to address is uh, why I didn't get surgery. Uh, I just don't think I needed it. Um, it wasn't that severe. Uh, but also, I feel like with a labrum tear, a labrum tear is uh, it's a symptom. It's not the cause. So if you're just addressing the symptom, it's going to tear again. Uh, sometimes. Uh, most of the time labral tears are from improper mechanics and wearing down uh, with an unstable joint. Uh, some examples for the, wear, for the reason why over time you just like grind away on the labrum until the tear is severe enough that you notice. Uh, for me, at least we think with the shoulder, it was like the 2% that's like an acute injury where uh, blunt trauma uh, is what caused the damage to the joint. In my case, it was during wrestling practice. Um, so ideally with the shoulder, once I get the structure fixed, um, I don't have to worry about movement. I am considering myself a bit of a technician with lifting and stuff, so hopefully I have good movement patterns. Um, but with my hips, I have a torn labor in my hip. I had really tight hip capsules, so I needed to address that. So I did a lot of mobility work, got them moving correctly. Um, I was diagnosed with femur acetabular impingement syndrome, FIA, FAI, both cam and pincer in both hips. Did a lot of mobility work, and after two years, it's a long time, but after two years, the doctors don't seem to be able to tell um, that FIA, FAI happened. A lot of people don't believe me when I tell them that, you know, the calcifications seem to have gone away, but they seem to have gone away, so, without surgery. Uh, so, um, I really worked on my hip mechanics and uh, before getting into prolotherapy, so that hopefully I, once I got the labrum treated, I wouldn't tear it back down. Um, yeah, so don't really want to talk about my hip as much, I want to stay more focused about shoulder. I mean, that's what this blog is supposed to be about. Sometimes I'm going to talk about my hip just because that's something that's going on. Um, but uh, I digress. So currently today, it's been three days. I feel better uh, than I did, you know, the day of, but uh, I've felt better yesterday. But I don't think it's like I've taken a step back. It's just for whatever reason, the pain seems to come and go. So maybe I slept on it wrong. Uh, I don't know. But uh, I just wanted to report that because a lot of people, when they 
talk to me about prolotherapy. When they undergo prolotherapy, they start to wig out when things are going, something happens and they think, oh no, oh my God, uh, the treatment's not working and stuff like that. But this is like during the first week. And I always just tell them, just at least give it time. And by give it time, this, this is gonna take like six weeks at least. Uh, I think the doctor, uh, Dr. Fullerton wanted me to, to see him 10 weeks after this treatment. So really long time frame. You gotta have long term vision here with this in order to make it work. Uh, so I'm gonna just keep him letting y'all know how things are going. And once I'm able to start exercising, no matter what, I will keep y'all in the loop for each milestone. Uh, seven days, no, it's, it's uh, two weeks, so it's 14 days. So it's 11 days until I get to use the elliptical. Um, the elliptical that I'm going to use is right there. This is my apartment complex and that's the fitness center. Um, I really am not a fan of elliptical stuff. I just don't feel like it gets a lot done, but it's going to keep me uh, mentally engaged, so I'm going to do it. Uh, until next time, this is Adam.